uh, to the kit, and, and you can tell us about the kit. Sir, okay, great. Okay. Okay. So, so what? what are, so we're looking at a. Uh, this is a sexual assault kit. Yes. Okay. And of course, the uh, sexual assault kits have received much uh, attention, public attention, uh, uh, in regards to the backlog, the backlog of sexual assault kits at, at crime labs, not only locally but uh, nationwide. Okay. Yes. This is just a prototype, and it's un unused. Oh, okay. This is basically the the format. The de debris, dried secretions, external genital sample, pubic combings. Thank you for letting me go. You're yes. welcome. Oral, sa oral sample, rectal sample, vaginal sample, and, and I think I think we're going to limit our uh, perusal of this kit to, to that. And um, what else? At least that bag. Uh, the finger nail kit? Wow. Oh, that's from the, the coroner's office. Uh, sometimes um, when someone is attacked, well, they bite back. Sure, of course. And they may uh, scratch the assailant. So the fingernail kit is, uh, this kit is used to collect possible tissue. To right. collect tissue underneath right. the fingernails right. of the deceased. Great. Um, and I think I think everything in, in this bag that we've read a lot is pretty self-explanatory. So thank you for the explanation of the fingerprint. And and this this is this looks kind of exciting. It says demo yes. sealed evidence do not open and it's of course open. Yes. So that's but, exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your excitement. Uh, but this is uh, this is a sexual assault kit for right. living. This is a sexual assault kit for the dead. So this is from the coroner's office, and just in the. Uh, okay, so, wow, so that, that wow, and, and historically, have there always been sexual assault kits for the living and the dead as yes. separate entities? Yes, but it, the uh, the design is basically the same. Okay, well, I'm just going to start grabbing stuff out of here and, and ringing it aloud, which I, I find really exciting. Right nipple. Okay, what's this? So well, this is a. Uh, a way of uh, it's a these are two swabs, cotton tip swabs, to sample uh, the right nipple in this case. If um, if there would be DNA, let's say right. that the assailant in this case, if this would be say a rape murder, which which holds all three principal bodily fluids, blood, semen, and saliva. Yes, yes. So if say if the uh, assailant had uh, bit or licked or sucked on the breast, uh, the breast, these swabs are just wet with water and then it's uh, rubbed against the nipple and the breast as, as a sample containing possible DNA. Right, and then in the context of this workshop, when you're in Stacy and Kirsten's workshop, you'll get into the procedure of how you do the different types of tests. Yes, how this is actually then analyzed. Right, exactly. And there are different, right, in the laboratory there are different steps. There's cursory, there's cursory to indicate positive or negative, and if it's positive, you go into more elaborate tests, and they get into all of that exactly. in their workshop. Good. Yes. Well, all right, let me just uh, blindly grab another one, which I have to eat. I'm sh wow, vaginal. Okay, so uh, again, I guess that's pretty straightforward. Yes, so again, uh, the, the tube contains two swans. But this is a sample of the vagina for semen, for possible semen. So, and when, when these samples are collected, it's unknown whether these fluids are present. Right. Whether there's saliva right. present or semen. So this is, uh, but this is the first step, is to uh, collect uh, the sample. And then uh, it's analyzed later that first we determine if the fluid is present, if semen is present, if saliva is present. And if they are, then we uh, proceed to DNA type. Great. And, and just to sort of wrap up uh, this this topic, uh, semen and saliva and blood all lead to DNA testing, or is there other testing that's done on these three bodily fluids? No, that's principally it. That is, uh, there are tests. We do perform tests on these different fluids first to identify them. So if uh, uh, that is, if there's um, 
a questionable stain sure. to determine if it's blood or right. it's semen or saliva. But you're right in that uh, uh, after establishing what, what these stains are, we then move to DNA typing. Right. So we want to know uh, who is the uh, well, who is the donor of this? And right, and, and that comes back as a, as a statistical uh, result. Yes. The, the percentage that this is a match to um, someone that you, you, you type. Exactly. Um, just for the sake of, of the Four Force History Bus, or the big history bus, forensic science 50 years ago, saliva and blood played very different roles because you didn't have DNA. Correct. So. Actually, as little as 20 years ago. So tw 20 years ago, uh, you know, I, I, I've had the pleasure, you, with your help, of, of, of wandering these halls a fair amount with, with some uh, uh, on the sheriff's side, and and some of the old timers talk about uh, they, they they're hoping that suspects are uh, real salivators because they, they secrete a lot of saliva. So I guess the amylase in saliva 30, 20, 30 years ago was was something that was used to help identify suspects. Yes. Uh, the, uh, say, 20 or 30 years ago, the, uh, well, the uh, crime scenes haven't changed in terms of the evidence, but our, our, certainly our techniques now. So, say, 30 years ago, we were uh, very limited as to what we could do with these states as far as testing. Um, for example, if we, um, well, one, uh, Let's see, one uh, example of uh, the, the uh, limitations that we had back then. Uh, in order to perform typing on a stain, we would have to have a very large amount of blood. And, and, and they would have to have blood, a blood stain, say, this large. Oh, wow. In order to get typing results. Now, actually, we could obtain a typing result on a stain that size or that size. So you're, you're looking at, so, the, at, the, at the point of the pencil tip. Yeah. As opposed to, say, a half dollar. And so our techniques were very poor then. And they lacked a, a big uh, sensitivity. So it required a very large, a relatively large amount of sample that is relative to the day. A large amount of sample. But then, um, even if we had a large amount of sample, uh, our tests were not very discriminating. Right. So if we performed, say, uh, one test we performed was ABO type. Right. So I'm a, I'm a typo. Do you know your type? I don't. I'm uh, embarrassed but to we'll say. Have to do but that. we have so many tests to do on the dot, as you know. <laughs> we have my <laughs> DNA test to do. Uh, There's a whole another numbers. video. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll bring a pair of gloves. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so blood type, blood type, blood type. So, blood so I'm a, say I'm a typo. So we, we performed ABO typing. I'm a typo. Let's say this stain is a typo. We would say then, ah, yes, um, my type matches that type. I'm a typo. The stain is a typo. I could be the donor. But one out of two people are right. typo. This, 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 these are big buckets. Yes. And DNA sampling brings you down very, very small buckets. Yes, basically we can... Uh, distinguish everyone in the world, except for identical twins. Identical twins will have the same DNA, that is by our methods. Yeah, that's interesting. And there was, unfortunately, uh, a recent case of uh, murder of twins, identical twins. Uh, yes, so we weren't able, the, uh, we weren't able to help in that case, that is, to distinguish the blood from the two. Interesting. Uh why don't you run into the skull and let's, let's yeah. shift gears. Okay, so thank you for walking us through this uh, sexual assault kit.